All right, so in this, this is part three of the videos for the lecture on ionic bonds. Um, and in this video, we're gonna talk about polyatomic ions. Um, here's a picture of some of them. Um, so polyatomic ions are ions made of several atoms bound together. Remember, poly means like multiple. Um, so multiple atoms, right, bounded together. And so that's what we see here, right? We see um, ammonia, that's NH4. So I have one ammonia or one nitrogen and four hydrogen and they're bonded together but instead of being neutral like we'll talk about covalent compounds are they have a plus one charge so um, when we have these they're gonna act collectively um, together based on their charge um, even though they are a group of atoms so right they're just acting as a single unit with a charge to them this is supposed to be like a bracket um, now, they're going to have their own names. Um, some have special names. So we see like ammonium is a special name. Um, but the way for most of them, the thing that you're going to be able to tell is that they end in eight instead of eight. So that's going to be your big key thing. Um, if you see eight at the end, that tells you you're dealing with a polyatomic ion or if you see a special name. Um, the reason why ammonium has a special name um, is because it was discovered during the time when they were still discovering a lot of the like basic elements. And it was such a fundamental compound that they thought it was its own thing. So ammonium and ammonia, which is just NH3, those um, have just special names to them because they um, have just been around forever. Okay. Now, when we deal with polyatomic ions, um, I don't know why that's naming. That's not naming. We're just still talking about them, how they work. Um, I guess naming kind of works with it. Uh, now, when we deal with polyatomic ions, right, like I said, uh, you're going to see eight at the end. So sulfate is SO4 two minus. So like I said, it's sulfur bound to four oxygen. Let's see, SO4, the whole thing has the two minus charge. Now sulfide, that's just S2 minus. Eight is SO4 two minus. So they're very different things um, based off of uh, what we're dealing with. Now the bonding is gonna be similar because they have the same charges, but it's still SO4 with that whole charge versus one sulfur atom with a two minus charge. Um, so here's the common polyatomic ions. Um, now you do not need to memorize these. So I don't expect you to like know at the drop of the hat that cyanide is CN minus. However, you need to know how to use them and you need to be able to recognize them, right? If you see cyanide and you like just make up something on the test, that's not going to get you the point. This is on your cheat sheet. There's no reason for you not to be able to work with them. Um, these are on the... I believe they are on the Quizlet um, for the ions for this unit. So that way you can practice that um, and be familiar with them. All right. So bonding with them, like I said, they're going to bond as like single ions will. So it's all based off their charge. Um, and so when we think about like say sulfate, we're going to ignore the SO4 part in terms of like how the bonding goes. And we only worry about the two minus. So just as a review of how bonding works, right? If I have K plus and S2 minus, that's gonna form K2S. Remember, you wanna either drop down or think about, okay, I have a plus one charge and a minus two, so I'm gonna need two of the potassiums, so my numbers are the same, um, something of that sort, right? That's how they bond together, is based on the charges. Now let's think about that for potassium and sulfate. We're dealing with the same charges here. Um, so the potassium has a one plus and the sulfate has a two minus. Again, you can just drop down those values and you should get K2SO4. Um, now we never change that SO4, right? Um, it stays together as a unit. It doesn't break apart. Um, so the way it's bonding is based on the charge, but we don't change the formula when we're putting the compound together. So let's do some practice with these. So if we bring sodium and hydroxide, so OH minus is hydroxide together. Now they both have 
a one minus charge or a one charge each. So sodium is one plus, hydroxide is one minus. So that would be NaOH. And we'll talk about naming in a bit, but you just leave their names alone. So it would be sodium hydroxide. All right. What about magnesium and carbonate? All right. So we see magnesium has a two plus, carbonate has a two minus. So we only need one of each. So MgCO3, and that'd be magnesium. Carbonate. All right. What about potassium and phosphate? Well, now potassium is a one plus charge. Phosphate has a three minus. So we're going to need three potassiums. So it's going to be KPO4. Oh, sorry, K3PO4. And that's potassium phosphate. All right, now what about potassium and acetate? Now, even though acetate is a huge ion, um, we're still only basing it on the charges. So we're going to need just one of each because potassium is one plus, acetate is one minus. So it's gonna be KCH3COO. And again, it's just the cation name and then the anion name, so potassium acetate. All right. Um, now, what happens if we have more than one of the polyatomic ion? So let's take a look at ammonia, NH4+, and oxide 2 minus. Now we know, right, I'm going to need two of the ammonias, right, because I have one plus and two minus, so I'm going to need two ammonias to make that happen. So that way the numbers are the same. So right, I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna have two NH4 pluses for one O2 minus. And I need to show that. So let's just like, so what you would want, uh, yeah, what we do, I'm just, yeah, is we put that in parentheses to show that we have two of them. Because remember, that's a unit, they're together. Um, it's a clump. So I do in parentheses NH4, 2, and then write O. Let's say I didn't put the parentheses. Let's say I did NH4, 2, O. Well, that tells me I have one nitrogen, 42 hydrogen, and one oxygen. That's very different than two ammonias and one oxygen. So that should be a four. Um, you also don't want to distribute it, so I don't want to say N2H8O because this isn't showing that it's the ammonium ion in that case. So we do this one, so we do with the parentheses because it tells us that it's the ammonium ion and it tells us the correct bonding of it or the correct ratio of them. All right, so let's do a little more practice with these. So if I have Ca2 plus, and NMO4 minus. So the, I only have one minus on, that's permanganate, and I have a two plus on the calcium. So I'm gonna have CA, and then in parentheses, MNO4, because that's my whole unit, and then a two. All right, now Mg2 plus and OH minus. So the, o, the minus is referring to the O and the H, the magnesium has a two plus. I'm gonna write Mg, then parentheses, OH2. Again, let's say I forgot that parentheses. If I wrote Mg OH2 without the parentheses, it's telling me I have one magnesium, one oxygen, and two hydrogen. That's not what I want. So this is why we use the parentheses. All right, now um, Al3 plus and CO3 two minus. So again, I'm just looking at the charges. So with this, I'm gonna drop them down and I get Al2 in parentheses, CO3, and then in parentheses, three. So as you can see, the ionic compound stays as the clump, stays as the unit. We use the parentheses to tell us how many of that unit we have. Oops. <laughs> All right. So let's have you give these a try here. 
You can pause the video and give them a try. Um, and then when you come back, we'll go over them. All right, so let's go over them here. Um, so aluminum with hydroxide, you should have gone ALOH3. Oops, should right before I talk. Um, for ammonium and phosphate, so I have two polyatomic ions here. The rules are all the same. Um, I'm going to have NH4, and then put that in parentheses, and I'm going to have three of them, and then PO4. All right, calcium with acetate, so I'm going to have CA in parentheses, CH3, COO2, and then sodium and hydroxide. That's, that plus should be up. <laughs> Didn't realize that when I made this. All right, um, so that's going to be NaOH. Notice here I didn't put parentheses. It's not necessary because I only have one of them. Um, so you don't need to go nuts with them. <coughs> now let's say you did put parentheses on it on a test. Um, I'd probably mark you off like half point because it's not fully correct, but it's not incorrect. If you failed to put the parentheses on something like this, you would get it totally incorrect. So um, just be careful with them. You don't need to go like constant, um, but you don't want to forget them either. Okay, so when we name with these, um, it's the same idea as what we do with um, the other elements. We just do the cation or the other ionic compounds, do cation name and then the anion name. So take a moment and solve, um, or here I'll do the first one here with you. Um, so Let's do these first. So give a moment and write out those names. So that should be easy. Remember, you can look up the polyatomic ions. I don't expect you to memorize them. All right. So for this one, you should have gone Li is lithium. NO3, you'd look that up, and that's nitrate. All right. And for the second one, Na is sodium. CO3 is carbonate. Okay, now let's do these. Now, it's a little trickier going the other way, um, but you it's like two steps. First, you think about what is my charge, and then you think about what is the compound. So, copper 2, two. that tells me I have a 2 plus charge on my copper. Sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. So, that is CuSO4. So give the second one a try here then. All right, so ammonium, that is NH4 plus. Hydroxide is OH minus. So I would get NH4 OH. All right, so that is uh, polyatomic ions.